ਹਾਂਜੀ
Fox. Wow. Really got here. If I could call the meeting to order, tax income on financing reinvestment zone, uh, regular meeting. And um, first item is any public comments? Anyone sign up for public comments? Okay. Next item is approval of the minutes from the January 24th, 2024 meeting. Uh, anyone? Motion to accept the delivery. Okay. Motion by John, second by Lester. Any comments, questions? Not all in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Both same side. Motion carries unanimously. Next item, number two, is consider appointing members to the Tax and Financing Reinvestment Zone Number One Project Committee and the Right Chair. <clears throat> In your packet, there was a, a list of uh, the proposed members for the project committee with John Keel as the chair, Steve Wright, the member Blake Pitts, Thomas Cloud, and Bo Harvey. Uh, for consideration. I have a motion for approval. Motion to agree. Motion to approve by Tyler. Second mm -hmm. by Gary. Question discussions. Mm -hmm. If not, all in favor, please say aye. Opposed, uh, right. same time. <clears throat> Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Next item is consider appointing members to the tax increment financing reinvestment zone number one finance committee and elect the chair. And uh, that's also in your packet. And I'd like to point out on this one is that Gary Smith has served as a finance chair for decades. Anyway, for a number of years, and we'd like to take a break on that, and he's going to continue to serve on the committee, and uh, and in the packet, you'll see the proposed chair is uh, Tyler Johnson, and Gary Schmidt is a member of Michelle Lugatano and Lester Petty. So I would ask for approval or consideration of that group. So I have a motion by Steve. Second. Second by Blake Pitts. Thank you, Gary. Second. Yes. There's a lot of work over a lot of years. Yes. A lot of, a lot of others around the table at the same time, though. Absolutely. <laughs> and then during your tenure there, I think it would probably went from about half a million worth of increment to. It's, it's, it's grown a bit. It's grown a bit yeah. to in the mid 30 days. Yeah. Right? A, lot, a lot of work still to do. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, so all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, say your sign. Motion carries your name. Thank you. Okay, next item is to receive <clears throat> and a current project updates to discuss possible future projects, including not limited to review of current projects under construction, review of projects in design, a review of future projects. And uh, this is the presentation we've talked about that John has been working on to present and bring us all up to date. It's the one that hopefully you brought some snacks to the <laughs> If we can do this fast, I'm going to slow down and just not flow through this. We were going to do this, if you remember, December, maybe January, and push this one one month because of the uh, fact that we had so many voting items on, on that that it would have uh, taken us too long. So this is just every project that we have in our financing plan and that is funded and that we're moving forward. It's really the opportunity, you know, if anybody wants to weigh in on any of these, please do. Probably won't do this again this year. Uh, really, what we're going to be moving to is if you look at the last item on this list, number 10, is that 2040 master plan. And so in real terms, when you look from one through nine, it is projects that we currently have under, um, in our finance plan, uh, under design or under construction that really reflects on what we did in our 2030 master plan. And our concentration for really the next uh, six to eight months is going to really move from what are we doing today to what do we need to do in the next 10 years. And so really, again, probably be the last time this year that we look at each one of our projects. Uh, you know, I'm just going to start at the top of the financing plan. And this is actually in financing plan order. So. If you were to look at this in the future, it's just you can look at the top of your financing plan. This is project number one, the red line at the bottom is a rail the spur that goes into East Penn was part of their whole project uh, when we brought East Penn in. And we're just hit that point in the um, 
project that uh, we got to go ahead and build that rail spur at 2.187. So it is a uh, it is to be done here probably after October. Plans are done. They've been sitting on the uh, shelf ready to go. We've talked to Adrian to make sure that they uh, do want this and they have uh, said yes. You know, we, we are looking forward to that going in. So that probably sometime in October, November, you will see us bring uh, you know the bid plan to get that thing out the door and get it started. Hey, Adrian, so when we do that, does that still service the other back in site 64. Yes, it does have the potential to absolutely for the southern portion and other future projects. That's what you would you come off that same spur. Yeah, so wherever that alignment sets up, we'd cut in a switch off that spur and then feed them. When we wrote the uh, regs for this park, we can go up to a, a degree of curve of 12 on this uh, for off of, off of those spurs, so we can easily do that. Yeah, it shows that little Y Turning up uh, to the north, uh, that is not a part of this project. It is just the spur. But that Y uh, is something that we uh, need to kind of keep on our financing plan uh, and the R&D track as we move up into our logistics park. So I think rail is still an important part. As you know, this is, if anybody's gone out there, uh, it, this is kicked off. Uh, that This was really what the end of last year, what we spent most of the time was yeah. that we could uh, increase the dollar amounts that flying that rail on this project. This is a major project that will really complete off that home north uh, west uh, loop and look forward to getting this thing open. I think everything's pretty good to go on this, David, right? Yes. Again, uh, 44 million 574, uh, a big project, really one of the largest projects that the zone's ever done. Um, Again, if you're if you're out there and you drive it, you can really see that it's ready. They moved everything out of the uh, little trailer park, and you can really see how that's going to be opened up. I'm understanding that corner lot, just a little FYI, has been closed. Uh, I think QT bought it. It's for a gas station, so and we knew it would have gone under contract, but uh, you're going to see a, a sizable gas station go on that uh, north corner of this intersection. Just for whatever it's worth. If you remember, we had a bunch of water yeah. to get it cleaned up. It, it will be. It's the right kind of a company to do that. You know, there's a bunch of us that had looked at it, and they got 19 uh, un undocumented tanks on that property. And about the only people who would take that would be someone who's going to go put 10 more in. So, <laughs> you know, it's a, this list of projects were all projects the, from the last two years that we did to make sure we had enough water in this whole north quadrant. Um, you know, so the 24 inch uh, transmission main, you guys, that is completed. We will blow this thing off of the list. But uh, again, it was a big water project to make sure that we had water for Meta. As you know, the Meta project changed from a big water project to a big electric project. And so, that's what one of their delays when they changed from the H to the F design. But we we have done most of the water projects, which has been beneficial for the whole north park that we'll talk about. So we do have ample water to the north. Uh, we had a the clearly the Everhart section, and that is completed. And so that, that this one will come off our list. Uh, this is a, a the McLean. Uh, extension with a uh, pump station on it. Uh, if you'll remember on this one, this is one that we did put on hold and we're just going to wait and release this project when we definitely need some additional water. Uh, the note that we put on this one is that, that the uh, we got an exception for not having to put in a ground storage tank on that line and um, that exception will probably expire so when it plans are done we're ready to go and if we were to push this forward uh, or delay it I guess even longer past that exception then we'll have to have David uh, go back in and ask for the exception the exception just said look it will let you not put that storage tank in we'll see how it works and, and if it works then we won't think we do it once in short what it is uh, again this is a, a really important project for that uh, quadrant, but we've got ample water to supply all the projects we've got going up there currently. And so we, we use these dollars 
to make sure we could get the uh, overpass on that loop done. Um, again, another uh, three, the 363 transmission line here. You can see it's going along the loop and then ties in over behind HEB. And that is a completed project also. So it's probably the last time you will see that. But again, all these water projects do allow us to you know, take that whole quadrant and, and make sure we have ample water for the future. Uh, this is the wastewater extension. Uh, again, uh, when they went from uh, all water to electric uh, is, is a project that we were able to scale back a little. It is completed, but we did pick up some additional dollars because they didn't need that equalization basin where they were going to store a bunch of water because they needed a ton of water. Again, that was, uh, uh, you know, the last time we'll talk about this, but all of that sewer line has been put in. Uh, Meta has ample sewer and water for their project and all the savings that we were able to save and complete this project uh, is the dollars that we use to make sure we had the money to do the outer loop. That one last little trunk upsizing, there's really two. This one uh, running down Kegley, uh, again, uh, is a project that we need to get done. If you see it, it's just running right down, uh, but, you know, south of Wildflower and, and blows through there. And it's a, a line that I, I really, again, we put it on hold. This is some, some dollars that we had picked up again <clears throat> to make sure that our financing plan balanced. Um, you know, still have some easements that we need, but a project that is complete as far as design, sitting on the shelf, ready to pull the trigger, a fairly simple project. And if we get a real large water user in our industrial and logistics park to the north, it'll be very easy for us to go in here and, and stick this thing back on a bid list and get completed. Yeah, this is the storage, uh, is the uh, elevated storage tank out there, and again, a transmission main. Uh, if you, you're out there, uh, you can see this, uh, you know, $7 million, uh, again, was one of the last little pieces to that whole North Park. Uh, interesting, if you look behind that water tower, just about as far as you can see, uh, EDC has almost contracted everything you can see behind that water tank right now. Uh, we're sitting in a situation where we can really move forward on that project. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but you can see the importance of everything that we went to this point, water, this elevated storage tank, the outer loop is what is going to feed, I would say, the next uh, 10 to 15 years of uh, uh, economic growth to the north. Uh, really, one of our primary goals is to make sure we have the jobs. We'll talk a little bit about this, but uh, this is really going to secure. We got uh, behind us on this is Site 64, probably one of our prime tracks uh, to the west is the burn track. Uh, both of those are sitting there, shovel ready, uh, water sewer, and, and everything on the horizon is what we're looking to do. So, again, that project is complete. And so the, really, as you move into this North Industrial Park, uh, you, we are now making the move uh, to really the land that you see right there. I, I believe every almost everything that you're seeing on this slide is now under contract with uh, either under contract or being closed with EDC. And so our real move this year will be to begin the process of opening this land up uh, getting them certified tracks as far as water, sewer, uh, access with roads, uh, annexations, uh, the whole the whole nine yards to, to be able to uh, have a EDC uh, use this property. This is, uh, is one of the master plans. I, I will say that in March, uh, I think, uh, Bob, March or April, we could do a full presentation on the on where we're heading on this. Uh, Covey and KPA have done multiple slides, uh, four or five slides that represent how we can develop this. That green line in the purple box was uh, what they were using EDC to try to uh, make a application for a large project. Uh, I believe that that project has uh, gone away. That green line, we've adjusted a little bit. And so this project, uh, all of the plans that Cunning KP have done is are near complete. 
and we could do a full presentation on this. Uh, I believe that I've been asked by Adrian and the EDC to give them a little update. So you on the EDC will see it. Uh, we, we had laid back a little bit on this. This was the 150000 We We added some dollars to it so that we could expand the project so that uh, Adrian could use this um, whole presentation to begin to, uh, to go out with a lot of the individuals that he's got coming to uh, Temple now. So we've updated. That was a dollar that was updated. Um, this was a land strategy, you, you, you know, it's the, the one and the twos, you guys, we've um, pretty much uh, got our arms around it. Um, I believe, uh, number one, everything but a very small piece is under contract. And uh, number two, I say 75% you know, of that is done. Uh, nobody has seen this, but they're in, in the next uh, presentations as we look forward to where we're going in this quadrant. Um, I've added a five. Uh, Change the four. And you guys haven't seen that. I'm just rambling, but I will tell you that on the land strategy, which is just to making sure that you know we're out there and know what we could do, we we have adjusted that. So really, number one, we're we are good to go. We're going to get that project started. Uh, one of it is you know is making sure that we have sewer to that quadrant. And so in the in the outer loop project, uh, LEO one and LEO two serves this area. If you go out there right now, they're dropping those pipes in the ground as we talk. All the easements are done, and then on the other side of the rail, we will continue to take that that sewer line up into number one there, so that we can serve it with water. I mean sewer, and we got 12 inch water line that runs along the loop that's currently in the ground, and they will be extending that all the way over to uh, towards I 35 and uh, completing the loop there. Um, so that's what these are talking about. And this is LEO one. It just blows along the lower sewer. I mean, the lower blue, which is that runs down that whole floodplain. Uh, again, that, that is, um, will be in this project. And we'll have, uh, this is showing the, you know, actual easements that uh, Kathy and her group have had to do. I mean, every one of these projects has just a ton of right of entries and then easements so that we can do it. You know, on every project, just sort of gives you just a heads up on how much it takes. Every one of those little square boxes are a track of land that we've got to go and, you know, get easements and right of entries on. So you know, on every one of these projects, we won't dwell on them. Uh, the wrong word to while you reflect on them, but you know, every time we have a project, you guys, the amount of, of right of entries and easements that it takes to get these projects going is one of the hurdles we have. And and so, you, you know, again, that's what this represents, and you'll see others like that as we move along. So, again, um, LAO1, LAO2, uh, the land's bought, and we're moving to that whole north. Uh, we had that road, uh, that's the white run running down the middle. That's where we had started. Uh, we have moved that to the east now to get it off of that uh, curve and to actually be able to access some of our property. So again, in March, uh, April, we'll have a whole presentation on that. We do have and have adjusted our, our dollars to reflect an 8.129 construction and you can see that that is in 2024 so uh, that is something that we need to be voting on here fairly quickly i don't believe you have the contract yet to design uh, now that we know that we have the necessary land under contract and can move forward uh, i would hope we could move um, in this next month to get the seven hundred and sixty one thousand dollar design on this done uh, the loops released, water and sewer um, are on their way over to this site. Uh, we know what we're gonna do. We have a full master plan, which I'll present to you. So it's time for us to release that top line. And, and you can see that we have construction dollars and we'll move straight into building Old Howard to the north and opening up, I would say close to uh, 500 acres for EDC to begin to uh, market for us. Uh, one of the last little projects that we put on hold was a sewer line that goes from the top, which is the HEB, um, uh, down, uh, you know, almost down to the past. Uh, it's on Industrial Parkway. 
that red line, it's a current sewer line that goes along there. We were gonna blast it. That was for Ocho. Ocho was a huge water user. And so we were gonna get way out in front of them, blast that line before they got their plant in there so that we didn't have to be trying to blast that sewer line during uh, their opening. Uh, we lost Ocho uh, for multitude of reasons. We put this on hold, plans are done, simple blast project. If we had a major water user take burn track or uh, I would say the uh, one or two tracks to the, the north that we have bought, we would just do this project on the shelf, ready to go, It'd be an easy blast project. Um, blast means you just run the pipe down through the center of what's already there and it burst it, I guess I call it blast, it's burst morning. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yeah, again, it's on hold. It was just another one of those projects, you know, that we took the dollars and used them in, in, in places that we needed until our increments get uh, large enough. So, again, it's ready to go. Simple project. That's what we're doing. Uh, another project that we will also be making a presentation in March is that we had uh, KPA looking at both uh, the Dozier wastewater on the left, that Temple Belton on the right, and a little bit of education for us and also getting a clear picture on what it would take uh, for these two um, facilities, our sewer facilities, to uh, what would it take to be able to take an Ocho or a tower? Those were two fairly large projects that had they were large water users, but also in the NKF report and, and reports that EDC have done, they've gone out there and said, okay, so what is Temple, Texas? What are you guys? What should you be targeting? What kind of industry should you have in the Temple, Texas? And, and we've told our executive director and EDC to go out there and target those people. Well, they came back and said, your food service, you know, you got AGB, you've got Walmart, you've got PFG, you're on, on in the middle of the state, you're on I-35, here's who you should be targeting, right? Well, those particular um, types of clients have a huge amount of BOD fats that come into that, and BOD, when they hit over here, both of these have limited, they, we have capacity in both of these as far as water. So you can pump a lot of water to both of these plants and we can put it downstream, sell it to Panda. The bigger problem is, is all the fats that have to be settled out and, and it has become a little bit of a constraint for EDC, for the, for the staff to say, how do we do that? So this project was for David to go out there and say, David, we want to know what it would take for us to be able to hold enough of those fats uh, that are out of water in kind of dollars would it take and what are we looking at? And so I believe Tommy will be prepared. We're hoping in March to come in and you guys can learn about this uh, fun project on how do you take care of that ugly stuff when it goes into here. And so, uh, Bob and I just got I had a small presentation <laughs> on an update on this, and you, you know, I hate to say this, but it's like listening to Chinese, you know, and the, they're telling you, "What please, you know, all these numbers, all that long change. Can you just tell them that's in their mouth?" We're we're we have to show the presentation down from an engineer's <laughs> point of view is how do you make sure that if an Ocho comes, Bob and I made up a new term, which is Ocho. Do we have one Ocho or two Ochos, right? Because <laughs> they're going to come and talk Chinese to us uh, in March as to what it takes to do that. That's a, a long deal, you guys. But seriously, you could spend, we spent two hours and I walked out thinking, yes, hey, geez, I've got to go to another class. So we're going to try and make this presentation very simple to you, which is to say, if we had an Ocho come to Temple, Texas, can we say yes or no, all right? And what would it take? And if you guys know what an Ocho it was just a high fat um, BOD project and probably a couple of these projects walk away from Temple, Texas because this two facilities cannot handle it. And it takes such a long time for us to make a decision on how do we take care of it that they go somewhere else. Waco took one of them from us and I, I, I don't know. Commentary, but we wanted to. We wanted you to know. We wanted to understand. We wanted to educate ourselves on what it would take. That's what that slide represents. We've uh, we we've done uh, the work. Now, the reclamation planning is just ASR. Work. We also is another part of making sure we have water into the future, and and they're educating us on that. So good part of that project. 
as we move around the horn, you know, corporate campus really needs to be uh, uh, brought back up. Well, we have uh, seventy-five thousand dollars. I believe we're going to push ahead uh, with this master plan, capture that seventy-five thousand dollars, and revisit the that master plan in um, in what we are going to do. So, as a part of the twenty forty. Uh, we have little dollars sitting out there that we're going to compile all together uh, to work with KPA and Covey to make the um, presentation. That's a very large a track of land out there that is residential, and we're going to revisit that and get that done. Uh, the Crossroad Parks, there are multiple projects in here that, that we're really going to focus on all in the first quarter. Uh, we always show this one because it represents we wanted to light that hike and bike trail. And, and we were just going to do this bridge and light it. Uh, this is a year and a half, almost two years ago. She's been three years. We extended the, <clears throat> the scope of work. We wanted to light the bridge. That's all we wanted to do as the zone. But like that bridge, we said we should go bridge to bridge. So we should go from the health plan all the way to the Green Bridge on 2305. Uh, we spent the money to make sure we knew how to do that. Um, so that's been completed on the top line, but we have not funded uh, lighting that trail and, and believe that that's one of the many projects in the park we want to look at. Um, this is a new project that Bob has really pushed and we have presented to the um, project group, which is, uh, again, would be worth our time to go through the whole master plan on the crossroads, which is lighting the fields and, and some other future projects. Uh, um, we will be bringing this back also in March to have uh, David go out and determine, I don't know if you know where this track line is, you got the fields to the on the left that are currently completed. The, uh, that large piece on the right where the red, the one, two, and the three are, is just packed full of trees. And if you go drive that, uh, it's turning into a dump site. You got people who live out in there. It's, it's a real problem. You got a lot of kids that we have in this park and all that. And this is one of those areas around town that, uh, that where you, you can go back in there and we get a little bit of uh, grocery cart camps and stuff like that. And so what we would like to do is to go in this and take the trees out. Uh, that's what we've done around the airport and other tracks that we have. So we're gonna have David come back with a uh, dollar amount for us to go and get rid of all the mesquite before it gets out of control, clean this so we can mow it. Also, what we would like to do is see you're splitting that property with a road that goes from Prairie View to Airport. Uh, we're going to have him go ahead and design that one road that would uh, transect that and or dissect it and a parking lot and attempt to do a uh, lot one. So if you go out there on lot one, it is fairly low and you could probably tier that lot green area number one just in a, a, a two tier with the dirt you have there. Uh, go surround it with lights and you would have some black football fields, uh, something that Kevin has really been pushing for, trying to take some of the younger kids off of his current soccer fields. Uh, having a place where the younger baseball teams, the little kids, you know, black football has become fairly big and it's just, uh, anybody has kids understands you've built in the fields that they're being uh, used a bunch. And so for us, we'd like to, we, we've helped on this. It's something we take off the back of the city and has become a, a, a pretty good draw for our community. So we would like to see what it would take to get number one. To do that, we got to get with David, new project, say, look, we want to get rid of the trees. We want you to design that street. We want you to say what it's going to cost for number one so that we know what the dollar amount is and, and see if there's a way for us in the future to get that done. The fun part about that is it is the beginning of possibly being able to add uh, four, five, and six. And so, again, you can take and use it as a rec field now, uh, get it prepared, get yourself some parking, uh, get it open up. The red is uh, being held for retail that is uh, park-related. Uh, that number two up there would be nice, some some sort of a rec for Kevin in the future, and so additional fields. Uh, again, this is a long-term view. And so, again, we just want to move, help the – help the parks uh, get some plans, get some dollar amounts and, and know exactly what it would take to move that attraction forward. 
And again, stop me anytime. I mean, if you guys have a question, this is we were not going to look at these. <laughs> uh, if you're out there, this section from Tarver to Riverside Trail is now under construction. Of, been a huge project. We did the right of way and design on this the zone uh, city. I think with uh, the help of TxDOT is finally got this project released. And so under construction today is that section from the north that'll take us to I-35. This section that takes us down past Poison Oak. You understand the importance of this one. You saw that they've opened up Poison Oak over to the charter school off of 317. She's, uh, she, the city, has their second phase of Poison Oak, which will attach into this. And so in 18 months, you're going to be able to drive down this portion of the outer loop. Uh, where that two subdivisions are, it is split by Poison Oak. Poison Oak take you over to 317 and will really make a huge difference uh, as a reliever on 2305. Um, and, and so, again, that project, both of those projects are... Are moving right now. Just to point out, when this is completed and the North Outer Loop is completed, all the Outer Loop projects will have been completed except for one last segment from here down to I 30. Sorry. <laughs> the last project. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we are, we do it right away again and, and, and have done the design on this. Uh, again, it's very timely. Uh, a little bit of a change. See, this one's going north and south, and we and we rotated that. So you can see the subdivision on the left. On this, it's the subdivision on the top, right? You can see poison oak. So this that that poison oak will be completed. You can see the word in there. It's the poison oak. The right of way is already there, and the design is done, and it is funded. And I believe this um, Richard, you're probably getting pretty close to releasing that last section. Well, again, you guys will make the. The outer loop, uh, the green line will be completed. We'll tie it into um, the 317. And all David got, you know, the state funding again for uh, this last section. Uh, we have approval from the state to do the funding. But when you do that, you've got to go through the hurdles of getting this thing approved through the state. And so they want to look at every one of those lines 10 different times, 10 different ways, make sure that we don't hurt a frog or take over something. <laughs> Uh, there was some old uh, dairy that was on one of the red pathway uh, back in the 1800s. You can't see any of it. It's not there. Not, you know, I think that old tower that's sitting there, but it has slowed it down. So we got to make sure that we're not ruining a historical or hysterical site. You know, so the, this project is the moving. Are all three of those lines being proposed, or is it an? A, B, or C option. All of those were proposed. I think you're in the red line, right? No. Okay, tell me. Here's a little update on this thing. So we had the green line established. Uh, that's that's the line that we've had for a very, very long time. Um, we had that more or less complete through TxDOT. Originally, the project's under construction now, plus the connection to I-35 was all one environmental assessment. And we had to split it because the green line at, a, at the federal level, they found on the um, whatever, whatever direction you want to call it, south side of BN, uh, there was an old dairy. And that created problems. The blue line coming across 35 is where there's uh, an ancient popper's grave, graveyard. So that's an issue. And of course, the red becomes an issue for many reasons. Um, anyway, we had the green established, ready to go, and there are about three things from the uh, historical element at the federal level that do up some roadblocks, and so now they're making us go back through all three alignments and do enhanced environmental assessments for all three. So that has put a, a little bit of a, of a uh, roadblock, unintended. <laughs> For for that that section, um, good news is is that I thirty five. Uh, you know they're working now to take I fourteen from Belton. This is the only section of I thirty five that has not been upgraded and has been released through TxDOT uh, for I fourteen. And so we're still out in front of them, and I believe that's also why they're looking at this, because they will make that intersection across I-35 for us, which is why we tried to get way out in front of them like we did to the north, 
is that when we have our plans done and they know we have our plans done, they will supply the intersection like they did up at um to the north burger burger, yeah, burger. Yeah. and so that, the the good part is i believe that's also why they're taking a look at this because they wrapped it all into their uh, i-14 connection from belton to our loop and that's the only section of i-35 that hadn't been completed and, and I th I, that's i think one of the reasons so we've got the road going up and split <laughs> yeah and then is there a route that's cheaper yeah, certainly the green. Don't you think green Absolutely. will still end up being the one you just said? Yeah, they're they're going to make you go through all the hurdles. Yeah, we had the green done, and the were really, I mean, there were two things that they got hung up on. One is, you know, if y'all driven Charter Oak, you've seen it. There's there's a an old structure you drive underneath on Charter Oak, which was an old bridge, which we don't touch at all. Uh, they were confused on that. We explained, you know, that's outside of our proposed construction and the right of way that we're acquiring. The one that really got hung up is on the, the other side of the BN was a historic dairy. Um, we offered to expand the bridge so that we didn't touch the dairy. It would just be an elevated structure over it. Um, but apparently in the 1800s, there wasn't shade over the dairy. So that was an issue. There wasn't shade? Shade. Shade. Yeah, from the sun, the sun was, was able to hit the ground. And if the bridge was there, that would not be possible. It's crazy. It's better than tree there. It's also what happens when you go get <laughs> state and federal dollars. If we, if we would fund the, this with the dairy dollars. itself is not like oh, a no, historic landmark or anything. Oh. No, it's, it's in their mind. It, it, it is in their mind. We're doing this project without federal funding. We could design a see through bridge. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on that. Okay. So that, I know we don't, I don't want to get bogged down on this, but have we already bought right away all the way down the green? Yep. That, that when you look at this, see the pending design completion environmental assessment right away. We put all that money, we captured it and, and you know, sort of put it in half apples. Yeah, but we did we haven't bought anything on that green. We're, yeah. we're waiting for it to be completed. Some have been acquired out there. Some other we bought it. But, um, yeah. 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 We, there's there's been, there's been, if we bought all the right away and were completed. And, and and would completely have completed our design. We probably wouldn't have got it hung up with the state. That's what we've done to the north. But it's worthwhile to use state funds, you know. So yeah. we're we're good to go. Poison Oak's not done. You know the green line's under construction. We we got that forty five million dollar uh, section to the north because we had to fly the um, railroad. Well, here yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. If you look on this map, you're flying the blue line, so you got a bridge. You're flying the BNSF again. This is a very expensive. What, what do you think construction will be on this piece? If, if we go green, I think at this point you're you're back in that thirty million dollars. Yeah. And so uh, it'd be really it's worth the uh, community's time to we're going to help and use state funds on this so that we're you know not spending another forty million dollars. You know when do you think you'll have an answer on this? Is it a six month? No, no. Wait, so we we are we are just about to bring the new enhanced <laughs> environmental yeah. up front. And Kathy, I apologize. It's probably 600 rights of entry. We have to have boots on the ground on every one of those alignments all the way. So you're probably several six, years. Yeah, I mean, but it's probably going to take a year just to get all the rights of entry so that we can put people on the ground. I mean, we've got to go shovel test the entire alignment the whole way. We've got to walk everything. We've got to look for it. Um, so, so legitimately in the first one, and green before we we got rid of it all of our trenches we had to put a tow ramp in so that while we were putting pipe in the ground water wastewater there was a ramp for the toads to hop out of the trench oh and there is i mean anybody i mean anybody in here has ever seen construct that's you can't do that it's tcu would appreciate but you can buy it you can google <laughs> you can go google tow ramp and they sell it they're not expensive so you know, yeah, it's worth it's worth it. You know, one of the things to to reflect on this little piece, uh, this will be the last piece that will take the whole West Honor Loop from I thirty five to I thirty five completed. I've been on the zone for twenty years. We started this project twenty years ago, and it'll be another six until we're done. So you're talking about a, a generational project right we have the east loop 
that we look at in here. And what we attempt to do in those East Loop is <laughs> to line on a piece of paper. What's it gonna do? Most of us in this room will either be dead or gone when we start working on that East Loop. You have to start, you've got to look at it and, and it, it raises lots of eyebrows. A lot of people get, you know, peep, but if, if you'll remember that we had Sonda come in and talk to us and they said, you guys are gonna be 165 to 200,000, right? We would be completely irresponsible as a community, as a city, to pretend that's not going to come. It's come. We're going to have 200,000 people in our community in 25 years. That East Loop is going to have to be built. And so as planners and as a community, you kind of lay, lay down a line and try to figure out how are we going to move people around? Otherwise, you wake up in Austin where you're buying land at 50 and $60 a square foot for the roadways and, and, and the traffic is there. And so this... This is the ending of a 26 year project. And that's what, really what you were going to reflect on is, mm -hmm. is how long it has taken us to do this. And, you know, as we move forward, right, we're beginning to say, okay, we've got our West Loop completed. What does it look like on the East Loop? And, and again, this will raise eyebrows. People are like, you know, don't put a line through my property and understand that. I mean, I understand that it's, it's, it, it, but, you know, most of these red lines, you know, we're 25, 30 years before uh, these will uh, come to fruitation. So you just attempt to, to know where you could put your line on the ground so that when we have 200,000 people here that we don't have a huge traffic jam. And so that's what this east line is. When we've looked at this, you guys, we're not buying land. We're not doing anything. We're just saying where... How are you going to connect this? Most of these lines, we begin to look at what uh, the, the K, you know, K Temple has done with, with the, the mayor who's on that. They go out there and they look at this and, and it's on their list. It's on ours. We try to marry it. And, you know, David's thrown it just to take a look at it. Well, can you do this? How many times are you going to have to? Every one of those dark lines is water. So every one of those is a bridge. And, you, you know, anyway, not to dwell on it, but. You know, the West Loop will be completed here in the next six years, and it is a 26, 30 year project. This is another 30 year project that, you know, Kathy's going to help us get the right of entries, and all of us will be retired and gone before we really ever start figuring out what we're going to do over there. Anyway, that, that's a, a, a small dialogue on the whole loops that we have tried to um, get out in front and help. Um, Hey, John. Yes. Bob, can you real quickly briefly describe where each of those three options of the outer loop coming into the interstate about where those are? The green one, if you look at that, that's Montana, right? Okay. You know where Montana is? Yeah. That's the most important one because that's the one we're going to concentrate on. If you look at the black line right next to it, you know, that's that little <laughs> professional drive where tech stops uh, licenses, right? You guys, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So between the green and the blue is where that 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 area right in there is where where you get your license bureau for Texas. Yeah. When you take the red line, it's too close to the BNSF and I thirty five. So David, you know, they want you to look at all your options. But as you move towards the red, you can see that we're getting closer to to where you know almost have to have a single bridge. You know, and never even land on the ground, and so. Where you take the blue line, look what it's running down, middle of a floodplain. All right. I mean, what the hell, Richard? You'd love to build that team, <laughs> right? And so the, the complicated parts of that is that they, we pick the right spot and we shouldn't <clears throat> spend the time we are that we even now today, this morning on that green line. It's that simple. That's where it needs to be. We're going to have to go through the whole state hurdles to get it done. It'll go right, right towards the net and it's every time I drive. That I just look over to Smithanes, look over there, and say, "Yeah, this is going to be an intersection in ten years." Up in, in, in a big, probably one of the most yeah, last pieces to West Temple in one of your largest growth areas right now is to getting traffic to I thirty five. Right now, the only way you can get to I thirty five right now is either down twenty three hundred five onto their current loop or running down the middle of Belton. I don't know if you guys have done that lately. But that's just insane. I mean, you can spend 45 minutes to get from uh, 2305 to I-35. When you're when you're out west, you know, for people who live out west, and you try to figure out how you're going to get down to Austin, you know, until we get this thing done, it's you can't. It, it's just a, a mess, and so that's the importance of it. Uh, 
you know, Synergy Park, this is another presentation that we will continue to grow. Uh, you know, uh, the colors there, you guys, are lands that we have bought. You know, David constantly, this this thing is a moving target uh, dialogue, you guys. Some, and everyone who slides this takes some time that we have pushed past our 2019 water and sewer master plan. So every time you come to David and you ask, you know, hey, how do I get water and sewer here? You know, his master plan hits halfway into this, right? <clears throat> we have brought that stuff over to Bob Boy. And so, you know, as you know, the water on this map is moving from left to right, right? And the green, that's those are floodplains, is heading to the coast, right? So if you just think about that, it means that's where your sewer is going. <clears throat> and so half of this slide is in his 2019 master plan, the other half is not. And so we tell David, David, what's it going to take me to take one of those little yellow squares over there and put sewer to it? And he does what an engineer does. He says, hey, I can do it for 700000 Right? That's what we did in our last plan. Now, I'm going to, rather than spend a lot of time on this, I'm just going to tell you what these what this means. And so he gave me that number, 700 because I asked him the question, hey, what's it going to take to do that little yellow square? All right? Well, then I, you know, Bob and I were talking, hey, you know, we're buying the stuff over here. And, and you got EDC and hey, we need this other 10 acres over here. And I said, David, well, that's really good because you know you got my sewer to that little yellow square. And he goes, Yeah, I can't get to the next yellow square. All right. And it's because he said, I'm like, well, blah, 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 blah. Make a long story short, we we are really looking at this quadrant to making sure that as we expand ourselves over to Bob White, we will be able to sewer and supply water. And we got little pieces parts. Every time we meet with him, it changes a little bit. Uh, this is this is in our financing plan. You guys, we we got to pay um, green data for what they had done out there. So again, <laughs> those are dollars that will be taken out of our uh, funds, right? But as we are working on that whole quadrant, we need to get water to the southeast. We we adopt it as a as a zone to help the um, Richard and, and Public Works to accelerate their planning process of getting water from the left-hand side, which is our water plant, which we have currently upgraded as a community to where we can make a bunch of good drinking water. Problem is that water is sitting over there on number one on the membrane plant, and we need it over here in number five, right? And to get that water from number one over to five, you got to put that green line in in some of the pink lines, which was a 15-year project on the financing plan. Uh, once we realized that this community was going to grow at the rate that it is, uh, that we've hit the, uh, the borders everywhere as far as water and sewer, we, uh, as a zone, adopted getting those design plans done and moving these projects forward. Um, and we're going to continue to do it. it. It is one of those projects that uh, it, it will take, if you look at all those pink lines, that green line feeds all those pink lines. David, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's in, in basic uh, layman's turn, we need that green line to fill the pink lines. Those pink lines are not all for um, economic growth as far as us in synergy. It is for that whole quadrant. But for us, it, it makes sense that anytime the zone can take some dollars out of the budget that um, the mayor and Ms. Walker have to do, and we take it on, uh, freeze them up to do other projects. And so later on, we're going to talk about that. The zone has not only taken an increment and in, in done projects that are specific to increment, we, we've also captured a lot of projects that take a huge amount of money out of uh, CPI, or, you know, capital improvement projects, and it helps us to accelerate uh, uh, an ability to expand our population because it's coming no matter what. Uh, two years ago, uh, we made this presentation to the EDC and said we we're gonna do that. And Jim had asked, well, how quickly, the mayor I should say not Tim, and asked, well, how quickly can you do this? And, and we had said, hey, pretty quickly. So we did it really quickly, right? To get that green line and all that. And we, we funded it. And these are all individual, real important piece. Uh, short term, that's a short term 16 inch tower. You go over there, takes us to making sure that we, you know, it's all downhill again. Everything's going from right, you know, left to right. 
You take that water, push it into the rain, helps us so that we can get some projects. That's very important for the zone, that piece, right? That one helps us get Synergy Park water, right? And, and that that's getting, you know, ready to go. These other projects, this is, these are all like 36 inch big old transmission lines, the little black <laughs> circles are pump stations. You take water from one section, you got to keep pumping it to the, you know, over to the other side. Uh, this, it, it, this project, which he has, has begun to do design work on, which we are paying, you can see at the top side, $633,000, right? Uh, the bottom side is the construction, you guys, $10 million that we as a zone said, look, we would really like to help community get water over there, take this off of the, the back of uh, your capital improvement projects. It, our bigger problem, and this is not a rock, uh, Candy, but, you know, we've talked about that one little map out there that we showed that, you know, for LEO1 and how many things you've got to do to get uh, that project going. But Jim, you'd asked me a question in that meeting two years ago, John, can you guys get this done? I said, we can do the top line, 600,000, you know, that's quickly, we did it. Uh, design is going. The second line, hey man, we can put a, a number on 2027, 10 million, right? We can do that, that's real easy. Go to the bottom, right of entry. For David to even begin to design, he's gotta have a right of entry. You know what that means? He can't get boots on the ground, he can't go out there and figure out how to design that exactly without getting his little two feet and guys up there with a stick saying, hey, what's the fail here, right? 59 of them was what we need. Guess how many we have? Then it looks like zero. That's right of entries. That has nothing to do with buying the right away, right? On one project. And so for us, we have accelerated that. This is it continued answering questions for you. You know, hey, can you guys do that? Yeah, we can do one, we can do the middle, but man, that, that middle part, that is, it's not a rock. I'm not telling rocks. It's hard. You know, it's hard to go to, to uh, get 59 people to say, can I get on your property? How are you going to do that? That's just so we can design it so that we can come back and say, hey, we'd like to buy that property. And so for us to get this water line, we as, as a zone, as a community, Richard always is calling, we don't want to lose Richard. Hey, Richard, he's wanting to leave us, but you know, <laughs> he, you understand, I mean, he knows this, what it takes and, and we need water to that Southeast water. We got to get this done. This is all commentary, it's pretty fun. This is a little piece. It is fun stuff, you guys. This, this is a little piece right now that we're, you know, we can do dry lines. We can, that, that's the railroad track, uh, we broke off. A and B, A and B was taking it from the water plant over to Lorraine Drive. Like we made an A, B, and a C, because C is going to be pretty easy. Uh, and, and C is really important because of the fact that we need to get the hike and bike trail. We got grant funding, so we broke this thing off so that we can get that water in the ground so that we can go spend uh, $3 million on a hike and bike trail. And, and it's real important. Again, I always talk about Richard, but it's really nice that you put the water line in first so that when you build a $3 million hike and bike trail on it, we don't go out and jerk it off, right? Take it out. And that's that's what we are doing on that project. Um, uh, you know, again, we, we've got, we got a bunch of these lines, you guys. It's just water. We needed one right of entry way. That's pretty easy one. I think we've got it. Again, this is the B section, right? It's taking it from Fifth Street to the Lorraine. So each one of these is just, you know, look at 23, zero. You, you know, we funded $700,000. The zone is taken, you know, folks, as you can see, a million three out of the system, off of the back of your capital improvements, put it onto the zone to accelerate these projects so that, you know, we can get some public works to, to move this thing forward. And, uh, we had twelve million project, twelve million dollar project, ten million dollars, twenty two million dollars to get water over there. Really, we're not doing anything until we get right of entries. This is that C portion that is um, being um, bid. Uh, one of the interesting, I, I will make mention that in March or April, we're going to have to come back in in changing from the A to B. Uh, if you remember January of last year, we broke out uh, the A and B and added this C line. And we didn't change the uh, OPC. The OPC that was given from David to um, Brynn and to everybody was 6.4. And you guys, we stuck with the old number. And so on our financing plan right now, it's 5.685. We need to go to 6.4. It really isn't going to adjust the project too much, but I did want to let you know that that did not get done. Uh, mainly uh, what had happened, uh, the the difference in those two numbers is uh, that project is going by Deerfield and then uh, through a couple subdivisions to the 
north of that, which uh, again, Richard gets a lot of calls from those people and he's been to a bunch of HOA meetings because as we run down that rail rail, you're gonna be taking trees out. It takes you a 50 foot width to put that water line in. And so we added a bunch of trees so that we can do tree mitigation on there. So the only difference between the five, six, eighty five and the six point four is money for tree mitigation, which will be done in about twelve months. And so it needs to be six point six point four in twenty four. Yeah. We should be able to do this. And and I don't think we'll be putting trees in 24. But but we should, but you know, as you know, with the project being really released, we want it in there. there. Yes, yeah. we break it into yeah. subsection. So you're, you're gonna see that coming. Um again, Lorraine Drive. That that is just all you guys to feed for us, the zone that we have a bunch of land here that is gonna become a very important park. We got about one MGD out there, we need about another three. We need that thing transmission line over there in our lifetime so that that whole corridor is going to grow. In Temple, Texas, when we <laughs> begin this 2040 master plan, there are two areas that we were going to expand to. You've already seen that in our master plan to the northwest, we've bought you know, close to 600 acres. We got water, we got sewer, we got an outer loop, we're ready to go. The other portion that you can see in our community right now is this southeast quadrant is the growth corridor. It's I-14 heading over to Houston. You got 95 heading down to Taylor. It's going to be your fastest growing area. If we don't get together and get ourselves prepared for that in the next 10 years, what we will get run over and you'll have just a bunch of muds out there and you won't be able to expand. So that's that water line. The sewer is halfway decent over there. David is working on that. Uh, we are expanding the boundaries and we will probably help push um, the, the council and public works to updating their 2019 master plan. Because if you look at their 2019 water and sewer master plan, well, we've hit the boundaries and we've got to push ourselves outside that. Again, these are just all the projects that are over. That's, that's the one little line. That's my little red, red square. That was the $700,000 deal, right? Seven, 650. To do that yellow square. Talked to David a little bit more and he's like, man, I'm on the border of this old master plan from 2019. I'd really like to tell you to take a look at this because spending 600 is one number, but in real terms, we're probably closer to 1.5, 2 million dollars to expand it so that all the land we're buying, we can do in short. So this is a project that you will constantly see us talk about a little bit that he gave us the band-aid and instead of the band-aid, we want to fix so that we can make sure that we're we're fixing that whole project out there and have enough sewer. That's what this represents, you guys. We got to get outside that. You take that little city line, that little um, black line, it is now moved out off of this sheet of paper. And so when they did this in 2019, it was an update from the 2015. The 2015, you guys, we've had a bunch of people moving in our community, don't need to ramble on this, but what's happened is we're off of this sheet. And so David has got to really update that. So that when I asked him the question, how am I going to get water? And sewer to a track of land that we just got done buying, he doesn't say, here's the band-aid. Here's the real fix. That's where we're heading with this slide. Any thoughts? That's why you're going to see these numbers. They constantly change a little bit because our scope of work changes as we move forward. All right, downtown, uh, again, uh, some great projects we've done you know, in downtown city center. Uh, is really been, we all know what's going downtown. Um, it's, it's exploding. That's really good. So we have this project, which is you know under construction, waiting for Turner Berenger to lower their scaffolding. I don't know. Does anybody ever hear from them? Are they going to lower that scaffolding someday soon? We met with them uh, about two weeks ago, and they thought they would have it done in four weeks. Uh, we got another meeting in another two weeks, so we'll give them their update. I don't think the four weeks is is. Uh, are going to happen and of course we got the professional building across the street too that we need so we have to go building face to building face and redo everything in order to meet ada requirements in our pedestrian facilities we released this project sort of knowing you know i talked to bo i love talking and i won't pick on you but you know bo's got a restaurant down there and, and two years ago i said mm -hmm. yeah bo geez you know i don't know if that you know that that road's going to be done you know it's the Turner Barringer is doing a hell of a job, you guys. I mean, really, it's going to be a first class deal when they get done. But man, this is a four year project. It was, you know, that scaffolding was going to be down 18 months ago, right? It's still up. We released the project. Uh, you got Russell down there doing a little piece over here, doing a little piece over there, trying to get this thing done. We can't 
finish this project till that scaffolding is down. Scaffolding don't come down until they've reached that certain point. And so great project. Can't wait till the scaffolding comes down because then we will blow out the rest of this downtown city center and tie ourselves to that beautiful garage. And you can see that they, we've done everything on sixth street. Is that six? Yeah. And fourth, you know, that fourth <clears> intersection, <throat> he's sort of got pieces, parts all going and we're moving ourselves all the way over to second street. All right. Second, fourth and sixth. And in that downtown city center, but as you look at this, we can't do anything to that scaffolding some. And so he's just doing pieces, parts and it makes the project look like it's long and old it really isn't we're just doing what we can john uh, can i ask um what is the reasoning for the scaffolding did they share that with you and i've heard historical tax credits i've heard that uh, yeah, we've heard historical tax credits uh, access you know to those top floors but they they didn't they didn't go into great detail okay. our, i get asked that a lot so it's like so, you, you know sometimes just the, the best one did uh, you know you look at that whole project uh, you know, I think it's changed a little bit from ownerships to who's in charge to all kinds of things in this project. I believe those windows uh, in, in the hysterical um, documents, they had to keep them. Right. And so I don't think they were able to pull them out for the you know, architects to you know, get the, the credit. And so I think they've had to rebuild every one of those freaking windows and you had to save a piece of glass and probably have a toad that lives up there and have got to get a toad to go to the top. So in real terms, that kind of a project is very complex, yeah. right? And, and it's complex in that the costs have gone up on everybody. You, you look at these projects that are happening, uh, all of these projects, you guys, that we're talking about, we were meeting with masks on, if you guys don't remember, during COVID to get these things released. And we're still sitting here, you know, four years later trying to finish them. And so if you started a project in 2019, and funded it and got your bid in 2019 and you're finishing in 2024, it ain't pretty. And it, 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 you know, double cost, right, Steve, all of us that are, have done that. We have uh, rebalanced, uh, the, uh, Richard and I were just talking about that. There are projects that are bidding right now, you guys that have begun to see a little bit of a, a, a drop off in, in the cost, but 2019, uh, 2024, uh, were were some tough years, and these are the projects that we're finishing. Where the ones that we started, this got all the thing. I'm sure those tax credits are huge. They've been yeah. basically providing the equity for the deal. I mean, they're millions of dollars. But I think it slowed the project by about eighteen months. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to build these lights someday. <laughs> this is the project. You know, you got to you have to dwell I dwell on these, and, and we took this time. I appreciate you guys seeing because you know we're only going to do this one time. This is a five-year-old project, one day, um, what is it, Leadership Temple came in and said, here's what we've decided to do for our project. We want a light downtown, and we got $40,000, right? <laughs> and so they came to this group, you know, we were looking at it, we're like, okay, you know, first of all, $40,000 won't even get you into the door, and do you know how hard it's going to be to light downtown? It's, it's a great project, you guys. If you look at the lights that we've got on Santa Fe and on the TISD building, uh, when we get this project done, uh, it'll be great. The purple are signed easements that Kathy is working in her spare time on trying to get these people to say, can we please put a light on top of your property? It takes easements. You got to get power. You got to do that. Uh, eventually, in, in our lifetime, we will get those purple squares lit up. In downtown, it will continue its restoration and become a very nice place to come and visit. It's a project that we adopted. It stays on our, our little slide here. It's, you know, what, $28,000. It's completed for a $414,000. And I asked David, look, you know, this is nice. You got received 43. We needed 61. There's 18 out there. You know, a couple of them, 18 have come in. I think we're just about to walk away from it and just do what we can do. And I keep asking David that four hundred and fourteen <clears throat> that four hundred and fourteen thousand dollar number is at least seven years old. Uh, you know who knows if we can still do it for that. So far, we're still getting. Just amazes me that that yeah. that you. This is one um, we put on hold at the end of last year. We got a group of people together to identify uh, people who had Friends. contacts with those lingering ones, with the hope that we could bring them into the fold 
And then when we realized that we weren't going to meet the company's deadline for getting everything lit up by Christmas, we put it on hold until March, which is, it seemed like a long time at the time, but now it's right around the corner. <laughs> so we will make our final push in the spring. And then what we have, we have. And then if everyone is okay with still lighting and understanding, it's not going to look like Santa Fe. It, it will be patchy. Yeah. And as long as everyone is okay with that and understands that, then we will. You can see some of the big corridors, you guys, are going to look good. Yeah, I still believe, and I don't Andy this and haven't really helped her as much as I have gotten with uh, Louie. I, I really think that they could possibly do it, but I think Tony would do it too. That's the big, you know, Texel. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude's, uh, he's a friend. I think he's concerned because as you know, he's moving out West and he's going to sell that building and he's concerned about signing something to, that, that will uh, hamper his being able to sell that building. And so I, I think it will actually enhance it. And so I think we'll go run it in one more time. Yeah, it's really important, you guys. This is important to make downtown look good. Uh, it's it's it gets old and makes us all look like we're not doing our jobs. But you know what? We adopted a temple leadership project, and it's it's a booger. That's what it is. You know. What's the reason that they're saying no? <laughs> huh? What's the reason they're saying no or having hesitations? I don't know. We'll send you out there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty easy to beat up on Andy when you're looking for those parties. Yeah, yeah. 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 Owner of one of those buildings has changed. Yeah, yeah. it does. It yes. changes. So. I talked to one of them. I talked to a person. I talked to a person and say, you don't really want to do this. And he goes, but I got this track of land on the other side of town that I've been working on trying to get done. I said, what are we going to do? We're talking about this building, right. giving us, but I wouldn't do that unless you fix this other thing. It's like my cousin's sister's brother, uh, you pissed <laughs> off five years ago. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I, I, you know, Kathy does this every day. I know it's right of entries. It's real simple. We're going to try to go and put a sewer line there. But you, you, you know, well, I got to talk to my brother's cousin's sister. To get, so, <laughs> It's you got ninety. We got a hundred of them out there. We have got to help staff and our engineer and Kathy to figure out a way to take fifty nine right of entries and get it done in six months. It's impossible. But my opinion is, is, is preaching. We got to figure it out. We got to figure out how to get these things done. Otherwise, we won't have walk. We won't have lights. And it's a you know, it's a, it's unbelievable what it takes to get somebody to sign a document parking garage is done this is a great looking little project it's done um it's amazing that you know that there's there's all kinds of uh skeletons buried under that thing to get this completed <laughs> really you know it it was real hard for extra cold to get that done and their bank is looking good i mean it's that's a good project done right this one's you know done ready to go we just got to finish that um this is a, you know, this is a fun one. We, Avenue C, you know, we've worked on it. Uh, below this, what's important is, as you can see, is that community um, market, which we are going to release. Uh, the two buildings, you know, the old Sun Glow and the, you know, for uh, blooming, I guess we no longer have a blooming fest. We have beautiful festival fields and probably going to have beautiful weather. Evan, you know, the one here, you guys... We, you know, we haven't had that blooming festival for six years because of the rain. This year we'll cancel it, and it's going to be 90 degrees and sunny, but we look forward to finishing this whole project. You know, Avenue C pushing all the way to the east. Uh, again, something very much, very much we have. Well, it's just commentary, you guys. It's. You know, Avenue C, this is one of those projects when you think about zone, you know, what are we doing out here at East? Uh, you know, it's one of those projects that the, that the zone said, hey, this is an important thing to do. Let's push this thing East. Uh, it, it was real important for the festival fields, the top slide and it's the festival fields and getting across MLK, that, that was important. So we got some properties that we bought over there that we would, you know, hope to get an annex relocated to and begin the process of We've done really good in the core of downtown, and we felt it was important to to move ourselves north, south, east, west from that core. And this is one of the projects that the zone picked up. Uh, Again, has a, a lot, a lot of uh, funding 
uh, we, you know, we're, we're going to push it forward. Uh, takes a lot of right away. takes a lot of work to buy what you got to do to, you know, to move uh, that project forward. This, this is at the end of that project over by the park and it's almost ready to go. And that's over by Emerson. We bought Emerson. You can do some redevelopment. I know that Aaron and her, Old staff is working very hard on programming uh, housing and redevelopment for East, um, you know, both in the Ferguson Park neighborhood and in the Crestview parking uh, or Crestview. neighborhood plan. So, you know, that that is this project. We've sort of backed off of this project right now. That's Henderson. That is in the Crestview neighborhood. We believe in in pushing this. Uh, I think there was some movement on on changing some of the right of way. We uh, we as a zone were thinking that little blue line is the drainage, and if you drive that, each one of those little connections are dead ends. Uh, we felt it really important to get rid of those dead ends, create a really nice corridor, and clean up the using the the drainage as a I can you know the cleaning that up. And, and bottom line, and and so. You know, Avenue C, uh, we got the funding, we're moving. This is Henderson, and you can see we somewhat put some of our dollars on hold on the bottom. Uh, we still are doing uh, the top portion and, and helping getting the uh, construction design and all that moving forward. Uh, pedestrian downtown, you guys, moving our downtown over to TMED. Uh, you know, we got uh, Boulevard coming from one direction, uh, I-14, uh, to downtown and we're going from downtown and hopefully in the next 10 years we can connect to and have a total brand new uh, uh, connection to it and all kinds of little projects that pop up on these the little squares on the top and the bottom can we take these do little parks and so uh, we're really good at taking projects and having our scope of work expand as we move so we come to you with a project and by the time we do it we've added three more projects on top of it because it just makes sense this is one of them Right, we we talked about those two little green squares. We added, you know, you got the TISD doing their whole upgrade of their uh, services, uh, and so we moved ourselves down Avenue E with that project. And and this project, it, it's actually moving along. Um, Twenty five for funding, four point six. Uh, that will really get us a hike and bike trail work again. The, you had to get Encore to shut down the street, or we had to shut down the street in front of Encore. We had to get the state to approve a, a lane that is not being used for us to turn it into a, the hike and bike. They've done all that, so it's moved forward. Uh, this is bought. Uh, this was the first drawing for our community market uh, up there against Festival Fields. Uh, we have moved it forward since then, uh, and I believe these plans are 100% complete. And we were able to find funding to to do that. So in 2024, I believe when will when will we bid this? Does we're, we're about to turn it out for bid. We've gone through development review, just got comments back on that. They're pretty minor, uh, so we'll address those, and then we'll be able to bid the bid project. Again, a, another great asset for downtown, you guys, when this is completed. And and so we got that funded. This is uh, this just represents uh, again another pretty picture from. Covey, I think you know, the Commissioner Schumann just loves this one because we showed him these drawings and it really is what he's going to build. And, and he's reminded us every time we pop this up. And I really like this line where you quit using it. But, you know, Covey, we, we asked Covey, you know, we got track land over there. Could, what, will anything fit on it? And he's done this drawing. Um, the most important part of this is that we are buying the annex that he did allow us to. to uh, the county to push that one year. And so over a three year period, we'll be paying $2 million to, to buy uh, that annex and they will take it and the commissioner court will design their own buildings. Uh, and I'm just going to rub this in. Bill, just don't know how long you're going to be here. <laughs> we'll just keep bringing this one up because I know that every time you see it, it makes you pretty, pretty happy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just waiting until I'm gone. <laughs> I don't believe we will have a whole lot of control over what they're building. We just had Hubby draw some, said, look at what would fit on there. So I, I love saying that. I, I've never really. And next time, time I'm taking the whole <laughs> taking the whole two hours of, of my time here. Avenue A, you, you guys, uh, Second Street, Main Street, Fourth Street, 
So we, we've got to get that design. As you know, if we're going to do any one of those sections, you need to look at it holistically. Um, and so to complete out that Avenue A corridor, get all of them streets built in the downtown uh, is a fairly large project. Uh, you, is this, do you have the contract on this? Yeah, we've had, we have the contract. Uh, we're, we finished up Geotech last week. We took advantage of Extraco having their road closure and for their facility and got our bores done on it. Survey uh, is done and about to be sent to us. We've droned it. We've already started preliminary. It is moving forward as fast as we can move forward. Now we'll take care of the Great Lake. Here, the two of this right here, <laughs> Great Lake of Cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's out front. Yeah, but it's just just to, you know to reflect on these drawings. But what what we end up having to do? This is the extra co corner, right? And so you can see that on the extra co side, you're you're going to uh, parallel parking rather than angle. And so we, we haven't told people that yet. I mean, that's always fun for for the mayor because you know we get ready to draw it and we say yeah you know about 17 parking spaces you're going to have six you know at a time but we built two garages so that at least you're hopefully you're telling people we've replaced your spots but and now you know, have to walk 30 feet yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, does, it does do that but this whole plan you can see that on, on the uh, west side is where we on each one of these we did it on uh, first we're going to do it on main we're going to do it on second uh, it doesn't look like we're doing it in front of you, Bo, but, it, you know, you're trying to determine on each one, where do you drive your um, pedestrian, you know, rather than having them on both sides, you, you get a good hiking bike trail. And so there's a lot of work to, to do a pretty slide like this and say, here's what we're going to do. Each one of those segments is a million five. You guys, we've talked about that. So if we were going to do Main Street and that intersection, that's a million five. Second Street and the intersection, million five. And so... Every one of those, that's a six million dollar, uh, six to ten million dollar slide, and, and and this is one of those deals that most likely won't add anybody new. We're rebuilding our downtown with zone dollars. That you, you know, there's times that you ask and, and council asks and members have asked me and others like. Well, what's your increment? Why did you go downtown? Ted Plonka would still be pissed at me, excuse my language, because he said here, says, you know, if you guys start building downtown, you'll never end. Uh, seriously, I sat in this room and he said, what are you doing uh, opening up downtown? But, you know, as we get to the end of these slides, you guys, there are times that this zone has gone out here and we've realized if we're going to get people to move into Temple, Texas, right, it isn't all about owning a thousand acres in our northwest part so that we can have 200 uh, employee and, and, and tell Adrian, thank you so much for bringing those people in. Because the reason they want to move to Temple, Texas is because Temple, Texas is the place that their employees want to work. So our focus changed that we took a lot of projects that were city projects and took them on as the zone and with a huge amount of money uh, of our increment because we realized that it's going to make EDC's job easier that if we make this a place that they want to live that it would be better and I'm crescendoing to the fact that at the end of this slideshow 202040 we've got to look at that and say what do we look like in 2040 so what 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 you all have to do and what my, um, our whole team is going to do is we're going to look at each one of these projects complete and say okay we're complete you know what does the next group look like and then what does it look like after that and how can we draw lines on a piece of paper and begin the process of saying how do we spend money in 2014 all right and so that, that, that I need, I'm taking you on this trip because we got to get past these to get to the next ones. This is something that I wanted to make sure, um, Tyler, that as we look at that, we've taken those buildings down, right? And we, we need to not have dirt. And so I don't know if we've got uh, irrigation. And, and so we, we need, uh, David, for you to get a number for us to get some black soil, uh, irrigate that. Uh, it, it is uh, our main gateway. That's why we took all those buildings down. We, you can see that the last pieces of concrete have been hauled off. We need to make this look really good. It is, you know, the highest, best use of this is going to be something really nice in the future. Uh, it could be two years before that comes along and we don't need a mud field. And so this is something we're going to come back with here in the next uh, meeting and find out what it would take for us to get that done uh, again that's something that the chairman rides uh, 
a lot of people about uh, some of the Bob is constantly anytime we take something down, he wants it finished through a irrigated in grass. And it, it, it's something that, that he picked up when he was chairman seven years ago and I think is going to ride us again. So uh, what do we got? The Veterans Boulevard, this is a project that's been, I think, 15 years old, right? And it's still got the same, uh, what I would call, Constraint. This is a tough project, you guys. It just continues to be tough and will continue. When we finally build this, you know, I hope I'm, I'm still around. Um, it needs to happen. Uh, we did First Street. You know, we got us up. Uh, we got us up to the end of this slide. We need to pick this up and push ourselves over. It's an eight. You know, it started as a six million dollar project, moved to a ten million dollar project, moved to an eighteen million dollar project, and it's probably a twenty million dollar project. It just keeps on, it's the gift that keeps on giving. The major problem with this project is water. Um, we hate to go out and spend uh, $15 million on a project that doesn't work. And so to make this project work, you have got to fix the water. To fix the water that is coming off of the VA, coming down to where that green line stops, it, it runs through all those apartments. And if you're over there, they're off us, right? David is now currently working on trying to figure out how can he keep the water inside this green line, right? Which uh, that's what he's working on now. How do I take all the water off of the VA, off of Temple College, off of veterans, stick it in underground, release it inside of this green line and not have additional flooding in those apartments that are currently in flooding? And so in short, that's what he's working on. How do I do that? And there are issues, and we're going to continue to work on it. We adjusted our ten dollar, ten thousand, ten million dollar number. We weighted it over to David. Say, David, go over there in twenty twenty four with six point seven, and figure out how to take care of that water, so that in twenty twenty seven we can come back and start the process of building Veterans Boulevard. That's what that slide says. This is pretty much done. It, it, it's a uh, uh, working with TISD again, this is all city property, uh, but is as a joint use with the uh, Travis Middle School, and they have big drainage problems. So really, what you got on there is everything to the left. You see, it looks like a road that's actually a concrete ditch. Right now, it sort of snakes its way through this whole property, and, and as a, a piece of this uh, bond, we the zone gave dollars to TISD to fix a city park so that they could uh, fix their field and make this actually functional, which it is not right now. That's what that slide says. And that big ditch flows into the water project. It, 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 right? and, and when you put nice concrete like this, if you know what it does, it increases the speed. So, you know, that changes your C coefficient or whatever, freaking gets that water down there even quicker and hits those apartments at a better rate. And so what's happened in this whole uh, drainage, uh, old Brownsfield, nobody, took any consideration what they're going to do with their water. It, it all hits 363 right now. Actually, it just keeps on going. Once you're done, we'll see you get under 363. You're heading all the way down Fire Street. Hits down there at uh, 93 and floods all those houses. And so uh, the log pit is almost fixed. That's out west. You know, we've done multiple big detention ponds out there because we had green fields. I think one of the things that David is looking for in this whole quadrant over there is where can I store some water so that if you store water in a detention, then you've detained it and it doesn't hit that creek. And if it doesn't hit the creek, it doesn't flood the apartments, right? When you fly this whole area, Bob and I spent a bunch of time on, on Google and said, okay, so where are we going to put a, a, a detention pond, right? And so every place we looked was a $15 million square. I mean, how do you, it's Brownfield. That's what you mean by Brownfield. You can't. This thing's been built out. There's no place for us to put water. To the right of those baseball fields, you guys, is a detention pond that, again, I, just history, you guys, and wasting your time, but I'm not. There's a detention pond, and we were able to get that land donated from Scott and White. It took Bob and I to go sit up on the sixth floor and beg those guys. said, look, it, the only way Travis can build its school, change its facing, and for us to get Wilson Art there, is we got to detain some water. Will you give us the property? And they donated that property to us in Scott and Wade. It's just really good history. And there's not much more land like that. So it really helped because we 
that's a big tench pond that sits out there and <coughs> take that water off and what's allowed TISD to, you know, increase their footprint. Um, this is done. And, you know, we, we did that helix and I, I, this was half of a joke, you guys, that there was a sign on this. We finished this deal, you know, and that we didn't really want it to look exactly like, is that what it's called, a helix? You know, it's a chromosome. And so we didn't want to get slam dunked by the, you know, the scientists over there. So we made this look like this. Make a long story short, there was a sign on there last week we took down the Sid, uh, a cockroach on a french fry. <laughs> 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 I had to take it down. I drove it by myself and, and it said, uh, artist unknown. <laughs> so if you drive this thing and you look at it, 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 it really looks like a cockroach on a french fry. <laughs> anyway, our art's done. Sorry, Tom. There you go. FBO is done, right? Beautiful building. Boy, you, you know, we don't get a lot of opportunity to hear the people that come through this, you know, guys, because they mostly end up in Adrian's office. But he has told us the number of people that are landing in here. If you talk to Sean, uh, you know, he Sean's doing a heck of a job out there. And, and, you know, the jets that are sitting out there, people who are coming into Temple, Texas to locate here. And, and we are changing the quality of place. This has been one of those projects really has, uh, you know, changed what we have out there. Uh, spent quite a bit of money to make sure this thing was covered, but it will be very enhanced. Uh, our ability to move uh, emergency personnel uh, to the various hospitals that and not sit on that tarmac in 105 degree weather. And so it, a really good process. This business, uh, you look at the master plan, they told us that those three hangers that are already out there would be done sometime in 2050. Right. And so we got those three and we already put four more in. Sean says he's got about three people coming right now, I believe, but not more. And we're, it'll be very surprising, you guys, that when you look at the master plan, they didn't think we'd ever fill this. We're going to fill this and it's going to take us some time to figure out uh, if we're going to need more. <laughs> and old picture, it's paved. It all looks really good right now. Um, ready to go. Project is complete. Uh, by building that FBO and the number of jets we had in, you can see that jet sitting up there in that little square. And, and you can, uh, you guys, you can't really tell, but where that jet is is not where that cupboard was. So he, uh, he, Sean, has lost a bunch of space for him to park all these jets that are coming. So we're going to have to do that little red square, try to help him. We took some space away from him. I thought he was a, you know, a little uh, off base when he says, I, I need a place for five. Uh, challengers and I'm like yeah right you know so he sent me a picture with five challengers and trying to figure out where to park them out there so you guys you wouldn't think that we'd have five challengers coming into Temple Texas but that one time we've got five six challengers sitting out here uh, you know eight you're trying to tell your people to use a smaller plane bigger plane needs more money so we have some 43 we got 43,000 dollars to pay to, to increase that tie down and another one of those projects that aren't um specific to an increment how do you say i'm gonna go spend a, a, another 10 million out here and i don't have no increment and it's tough i always like to get uh, the mayor over here because he's saying man you guys could sure help us in the zone and, and spending some of your dollars and help with us well you know 100 percent of the funds we do out here is, is not increment it is just making sure that our airport is is at the top notch and we adopted it as a project and have seen it through I and mean, we'll talk about that as we move on to uh, you know every every day somebody brings another project you got a taxiway that goes across the end of a runway and they're saying well you need to extend and get that taxiway around it that was a write-up so we help fix that we do the grant matches so every year you can see that we give a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> uh, about eight years ago um you know what i think david blackburn came to us and said yeah, we could do that, but you know, the grant, we got to have a matching grant, 100000 He said, I don't have 100000 in my budget. And so I believe you might have been the chair and said, hey, don't ever let a grant disappear. So what happens to us is we said that in knowledge, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, we got $100,000 out there for matching grants so that we never lose that. So another one of those numbers, Jim, that he had his own picks up, you know, this dollar amount that doesn't tie to anything to make sure that we as a community don't lose a grant opportunity to make our airport better. This one, and this is a good one for Tim. I think that a lot of people really like the fact that we're spending money on it. 
<laughs> Once a year, you guys. I get to talk about these. You guys, this is a, one of our gateways. This is a major part into our community, you know, and you can see that this thing is under construction. You got one chance to, when you come into Temple, Texas, you go everywhere from this intersection. And the state does nothing. You've seen it out there. It's their property. They won't mow it. They won't take care of it. They put a bunch of weeds out there, call them trees, and they say, man, your community looks good. All right. And we didn't accept that as a zone. Uh, the, the council does take heat, you guys, on projects like this, but it is increment. This is grant funding that comes from the state. If you look at this, it, it's, it is taxpayers on a state level, but yeah, you know, really doesn't come. You know, that's hard to tell people. I know that, but <laughs> do not they don't understand this. But you know, this is a great project. We picked up some money from the state, got a couple of awards. Uh, you know, Thomas Baird's uh, infamous uh, Keep Temple Beautiful Award, and I'm not sure we've ever seen the money, but he keeps getting it for us, <laughs> right? But again, that project is about a million dollars. Uh, I think he did. Yeah. It's real money. That's under construction. That's going to be completed pretty quick. So, hey, it gets us, we're almost to the end of this thing. So the 2030 master plan, you guys, uh, was a huge change in the attitude of the reinvestment zone. And it is close to 10 years ago that we started that plan. You can see we adopted it in 2019. It took us about three years to adopt it. So it was in 2016 is when we started. That's when Bob was chairman. And so, you know, about every 10 years, we, we bring up Bob because he's going to do <laughs> round two, which is round two, round 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 but it's really important to understand the philosophical change that the zone did in 2015, 2014, which was to, to we had an ED director at that time, seriously, who believed in one thing, don't touch the money. Put it all in land in an industrial park. That's it. That's what the zone was. And, and we had to study that. And, and, and we took all of the documents and we, and we looked at what is this? Up? What are we supposed to be doing? What is our mission? And the mission was that we're the developer for the community for industrial do job. That was it, right? That's what the mission is written. And that's what's on page one of that. Is that what our mission is? Job creation. We're the developers for the community. We take our own dollars and we go out here and try to make sure that we can bring it in. The philosophical change that we did in, in this master plan is that we realized that it made the BBC job easier. What you had to do is to take zone increment and to make this place better so that they would choose Temple, not just because we had land sitting on the ground, because we had a lot of land sitting on the ground, people not wanting to really come. And we couldn't figure that out. And so when you study uh, and, and as the group matured from a bunch of young people like us, which we were young back then, to the older people who said, don't touch the money. And so when I got on here, when you got on here, Gary, right? They, and you and I still hold to that degree sometimes. Like that money should be used for economic growth, right? That increment. And, and this document changed us and we started spending a lot of money on stuff that has virtually nothing to do with economic growth but makes our place better. And I bring that up because we are now going into the 2040 master plan. Everything I showed you on this um, uh, presentation today finishes out the 2030 master plan. So if you took the time to read this document and you looked at the projects that I just went through and you said, what haven't I done and what haven't I finished it, it, it we're, we're done. And so that's why we've got to look at what are we going to do in 2014, which is a good time to reflect. You know, we got $250,000. That was where the slide ended. I, 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 I got thinking about this um, three days ago, um, and I added these slides. Sorry. Um, I just added some slides to think about this, you guys, to, to reflect on 2030 master plan, 1.3 million in, in our gateways that we have spent for the East Loop, you know, you can go through those. So the conceptual plans, you know, East Outer Loop, what we're doing over to Gun, Gun Club, you know, the schematic dimes, you know, 1.5, that you, you can't really go say, where's my increment, right? Crossroads, $8.3 million that, you know, Kevin, you, you know this, and you, you constantly told almost everybody you can that, that the zones helping get the dollars is what made that crossroads part happen. 
the, you know, for this community, you go out and try to figure out what the what the increment is from that. You're not going to find it. You're going to take people like Gary, me, and some of the old people that used to sit around this table, and they would hang us to say that we spent eight point three million dollars in zone dollars, right, on the park. But it changed our community, and it took eight. $23 million off of your capital improvements budget so that you have money so you can go do other things. And so there's been this question. People ask us sometimes, what, what are you doing for us lately? You know, where's what? Well, you guys got a lot of increment. You know, where, where's it go? You know, and, and, and so, we, so we did change our <laughs> attitude and in, 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 in our presentation. We just said we, we need to expand that. We need to clean that field up. We need to make sure that we can get that retail ready to go. You, you talked to all the restaurants, and when a baseball team comes into town, everyone knows restaurants got to double their staffs, right? It has a huge economic impact for our community. This zone, this board, past board members have allowed this us to work with the city and to do quality of place projects that have enhanced it, that has made it easier for Adrian to go out there and say, you know what, your employees will like coming to this community because we do have a part. And so, you know, it isn't just, hey, come to Temple, Texas, because we have land and we can build a, a building and we got sewer. They want to know if their people can live here and enjoy a quality of life. All right. And I'm preaching because that's where we're heading with this 2040 master plan. $19 million in TBED, right? You, you, you read this and tell me how I got any increment, right? First Street Gateway, right? Avenue U, just so that we can go get people from Scott and White over to um, the VA and the Temple, right? That intersection that's got right the boulevard. You know, you got Briar Street, that hiking bike trail. Bob, what do you do? You and I spent, we picked this project up. I can tell you this history. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm wasting you guys' time, but you, you know, Bob and I get this set of plans. They ask us if we can go build this plan. This is in 2015. And, and, and I got a hiking bike trail sitting on the middle of nothing out there. And we had to, again, go sit on, on the sixth floor of Scott and White, beg those people to build that little hiking bike trail. And they gave us the land, you know. 19.6 million of zone dollars have gone into making sure that the area around Scott and White's good, our fire creek, but that monumentation, you know, the master plan, you got, you know, all, all those projects, you try to put a, put an increment onto that, you know, how much you're getting that airport, you know, $21 million. And you guys, uh, that, that is, uh, we adopted them and put a black fence around that. If you guys will remember and, and at some particular point, it'll be great because you're going to have all those old people gone. There'll be young people, and they won't remember that we were not going to touch the airport. And, and we decided, let's go put a black fence around it. $21 million later, we got an FBO out there. Look at all these projects, and we are not, it doesn't stop. You know, put an increment on that, you know, and take $21 million, take it back on the, on the, on the, on the city budget, you know. So we have taken increment that, that is coming in and have spent it to, loosen the load on the city so that you guys can go do other things and we can make it. It's just interesting. Number seven, you, you, you got to understand that when I wrote these down, that these aren't are all our projects. These are project dollars that I can attach an increment to. I just, and, 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 and the reason I bring this up is because that was the philosophical change of the zoning board for the 2030 master plan. We said, look it, let's help the city move projects along that'll make our city better because it's very difficult for the city to go out and do some of these projects and it's easier for the zone to do it. And so downtown, this is every one of our projects down there. This is not, this isn't to have the city center in there. It doesn't have any of our grant funding. It doesn't have any project that was a project that created an increment. This is the projects that don't. Santa Fe Market Trail, where's your increment on that? Right, your sale, the rails, the safety zones, you know, paying for the master plan, creating a rail safety zone, you know, the monumentation, the Martin Luther King Festival fields. You know, we went and bought all those houses, took all that land, took all that power, took all this stuff down, right? And it's difficult to attach a, a, an increment to that, right? This is your downtown projects, right? This is interesting. This was a very important day uh, in the zone when we had a meeting in this office here. You'll remember that meeting, for, you know, and it was one of those bullets that we took. But can you help us? Can the zone help us? We're paying $2.4 million to EDC to make sure that they exist and that they can do what we did. But you know, they're really doing it for you. The zone. You guys are the ones doing all this. So 
will you pick up that two million four a year? Right. And we said, yeah, it wasn't the easiest day, but you know, two point four million dollars. We said, yeah, we'll we'll pick that up on the zone, make sure that the zone's there. You know, a million dollars a year for Transform Temple to making sure that downtown is clean. And that's all it was going to be. All right, it started at four hundred. It's a million dollars a year. It's really important for everybody to know that, that sometimes our tax dollars are not there, but a million dollars a year, we make sure that our parks, Kevin, right? And you, you and I worked on this really hard and took every tract of land. We uh, made a file. We looked at how much you spend on it so that it didn't hit your budget. When we go out there and have a green spot, that we made sure we covered our part of and parks. And we just recently, I think, uh, re looked at that and adjust that number and we uh, need to constantly do that. So we're paying our way there. To me, I just, you know, when you look at that, you, you know, $112 million in a 10 year period on what I would call non increment producing projects. Why did I bring this all up? There's two reasons. One is it, for us to reflect on that, that we are paying our way as a zone on projects that we are able to take off of the budget. So that what we can do is to make sure that this community is better. And I bring that up because this is the end, right? To know that we're going into 2040, right? And we're trying to decide what is it we're going to do. It lays out the financing plan for the next 10 years. And we're going to finish what we did on the front end of this presentation, right? Which is a good 110, 117 million dollars worth of projects, right? We've done 118 million dollars worth of projects. We're spending four million dollars a year every year to make sure that we pay our way. What are we going to do in 20? What is, is this committee going to look like? What is our part going to be in 2040? Bob has a, a, a committee put together. He is going to start that. And, 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 and the project committee will be a big part of that. And, and our responsibility and the council's responsibility and public works responsibility and TDCs and, and part, all of this is to sit down and say, what the hell is this community going to look like in 2040? What, what projects can we begin to look at? How do we expand our boundaries? What's that 2019 water and sewer master plan look like? We're going to look at our CPAC and see what is our comprehensive plan saying we're going to do? What are our growth areas? How do we deal with the current annexation laws where you can't annex? How do you deal with the fact you can't get an ETJ anymore? And what is it? What are we going to look like? That's, that's what we're going to do in the next six months. I think I'm done. John, thank, thank you for that last oh, recap, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And and I didn't know you were going to bring that forward this, this morning, but that, that's I good information. Historical, to bring it to today, Yeah. you know, in our 2024 financing plan, which round numbers, $100 million in projects, by my calculation, $37 million, that $100 million, are City of Temple projects. More of more what you're talking about. The zones taking on, using zone dollars, to do things that otherwise would be picked up by the city. Okay, so I mean, I, again, to, to echo what you just said, I think the amount of money that the reinvestment zone in investing in our city is tremendous, it's tremendous. And to me, we just can't lose focus of, again, you touched on it in, when you started this, the value and, and our, our commitment, our, our responsibility to help economic development and continue to drive employment for our community, for our region, for the next 450 years, okay? Not to be distracted by a new shiny object that flashes in front of our eyes, but to remain focused on that. So I think I think what you just did reminds us of that. And again, bringing it to current day, 37% of what we're doing in 2024 city projects. It, 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 and it isn't a rock. I mean, you're not throwing it no, a rock. No, you got, you got to realize that we made yeah. that decision in 2016, 2017 to do that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and history is important for newer board members and, and we're gonna add more new board members and you're gonna see some of the older people disappear. But to realize that the original zone was to economic growth. We sat around the stable, the old guys, and fought to, to just do one project. $500,000 had to beg this board and the council to give us $500, $500,000 to do a downtown project. It, and I took all kinds of heat on a technical, I mean, and everybody, one person allowed us to do this, and it was Keeper Marshall, the mayor at that time. And, and he changed the board member that sat right here. And because that board member didn't want to do it, Steve, you'll remember that whole process, right? And that guy disappeared because he was fighting the fact that that 500 was going to be a bad deal for downtown. 
board change, new new president, and actually your daddy ended up being in that seat. That's who ended up taking that seat. Personal friend with Kiefer and Kiefer said, you know what? If we're going to make Temple better, we got to take our downtown and do it. And, and that man did a big thing. He allowed us to take $500,000, the first $500,000 out of his own. We didn't have much money to change because he, he, as the mayor, didn't have an ability to figure out how to do downtowns. A victory lap for this group. I, I believe this, and I don't mean to stand on this soapbox, but we, as a zone, single-handedly have changed downtown. $58 million of zone dollars focused in. in the increment, we, you know, Gary, you asked this question, I think, 100 times. Is what is the increment? Can somebody tell me how much my $53 million has brought us in on an increment? It's difficult to get that answer, but you've asked for it. But in that 2030 master plan, we as a community, all of us said, let's do this. Let's change the quality of place. But there is no question that, that it should be noted. It should be celebrated and it should be reflected on that the majority of the dollars, the, the increment that is given to us from our taxing entities are the largest contributor to the zone. The taxing entity, cities is 18% of that zone money. 18% comes from the city tax. All the rest come from BISD, from, from Troy, and from TISD, from the county that we, you know, they're, they're the ones that put this in here and it's replaced by the, you know, by the state, that money. We have taken 70% of that money to change the quality of place, take those dollars out of that city budget and allow the city budget to do other things so that we have a quality of place so that when you go out there and bring some in this community, they say, you want to know something? This doesn't look like the old railroad town that we adopted in, in, in 1994, I guess was my first day on this thing. You know, we, that's a very different city, a very different downtown a very different uh, hospital, right? A very different airport. And so you guys, to end it again, what does this look like going forward? Because it, it is us that have got to do it in, in working with the, the council. And what, what are we, what is this, what are we gonna spend that money on? How are we going to be stewards of the state dollars that are given to us and our taxing entity dollars to make our community better, make your job better, High quality jobs. You know what? That the old people wanted six dollar down. I'm not getting down on the old people, but they we were driven by. Let's make sure that we take our average salaries right and keep them at five bucks a foot. At the exact same time, you had a hospital out here with the highest paying jobs, right? What we've asked our EDC staff and board to do: raise that. Let, let's raise that. Let's get to where we're not the the lowest. You know how you get it. You know Whole Foods here and something like that. You can't be on the lowest end of the whole scale on the pay scale, and Temple has got to raise its average housing salary, and, and that's not easy to bend that line. And so we've talked about that in our neighborhood plan is to making sure you, you, you can't have your old neighborhoods go down. You got to bend the line. You got to turn it. Someday you got to get that thing turned. You know that's that's why we got Avenue C. That's why we got Henderson. That's why we we're going to go spend money in some of those places is because we don't want those areas that line to bend down. You got to turn that damn line up. If you turn that line up, all the dollars come up. If we raise the boat, everybody's going. It's not that old saying, you know, you, you raise everybody and we all ride, whatever the heck that is. Yeah. That's what we're doing. You know, that's that's what we're doing. And I'm preaching. And you won't get it again. You guys, this is yeah, this year. Thank you for that. You yeah. into that yeah. is amazing. And it's, it's a lot of work. And it's, you know, we're all here in that temple battle. And and I think as we move into the master plan, that will be the whole thing to it, making Temple better, secure in the future, and all. And uh, looking forward to uh, working on that over the months. It may take a couple of years to put it all together to take all the stakeholders to come together, but put together a good plan that we can execute. You can see what happens when you, you do a lot of good planning, things happen. You're right. The master plan tell me, down. Tell me what you're working on, though. I mean, really, on what it, what you will do to get that 2040 kicked off. Well, we'll end up. Bring in have presentations from probably 50 different stakeholders in the community from uh, the ISDs, you know, community college, uh, city staff, uh, Scott White. I mean, it will be, you know, the railroad, text dot, you know, all of those will have, uh, you know, they'll come in, present their master plans, what they're, how they see the next 20 years, 
and what their challenges are. And we'll take all of that as uh, putting our projects together to address all of those issues in our community. It's a, it, it's a long process to come together to do that, but it uh, ends up being, a, I think, a very productive process, a good process, and produces good projects. I mean, one thing that this group has done, I think, extremely well is put together master plans that can be executed. If you look at the downtown plan that's being executed right now, that was adopted, you know, 12, 15 years ago, it was put together by this group. And it's, if you look at it, you go, wow, this is exactly what's occurring. In every sector of our community where we put a master plan together, we execute. That includes water, sewer, roads, not all of that. The strategy of the northern acquisition of land for expanding the industrial park because we are running out of land. So anyway, it's going to be exciting times in the future to pull that together. Again, thank you, John, for pulling that all together. Anybody have any questions? John. Adrian, next time we receive a project update from the Apple Economic Development Corporation. I think I'll do only one thing between you and the rest of your day. So okay. <laughs> I don't know where to begin, but uh, I will say really appreciate again what the zone does here and it's reflected in this presentation today. Um, you really hit on, John, a lot of what is important to us going forward. We talk about Synergy Park. Uh, we'll talk about North Park later on at some time, but I'll tell the board that we're in negotiation or finalizing negotiations on two letters of intent down in the Synergy Park area. Uh, we own a little over 300 acres down there, uh, and we're now at a point where every other week we're getting interest in that area. Uh, and we're in a position now where we've got folks coming in, and they're trying to get in the second or third position behind the people we're negotiating with right now. And you know, data centers, technology, we've talked about it last month, is a huge driver uh, to where the Texas economy is going, where the national economy is going. And I think the temple stands to be squarely in the middle of that. I'll actually have a board retreat uh, scheduled for middle of April. Uh, there's some considerations with respect to that conversation with the data centers, the data center growth. What is our potential for more as we go forward? Uh, and electric is at the center of that. Uh, and so fortunate enough, tentatively, uh, we've got the director of all development local corporate uh, coming in to speak to our board and we'll be inviting some of the RZ members to maybe participate in that part of our board retreat discussion. He'll spend about an hour and a half with us, giving us a full landscape of not only uh, the grid in the state of Texas, but specifically what he's hearing from industries that are high or heavy power users that are looking at Temple. And what is our position? Again, talk about forward planning. What are some of the things that we need to be thinking about from an electric infrastructure standpoint? And what are their plans in this particular area from an electric standpoint to build that up uh, so we have continued growth? So thank you again for your partnership. Uh, we look forward to being before you in future months to talk about more development. Thank you. Next, I receive a project update from city manager. There's I think Mr. Keela did a wonderful job at um, bringing us up to date on many projects. The only thing I would add is that Poison Oak will be open on Monday. So that's exciting. The the signal on 372 of Poison Oak will be fully operational. So you can drive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is scheduled next board meeting, I believe, which will be March the 27th. So last Wednesday of March. And no other items uh, will be adjourned. You're doing two hours. That's exactly. You know. <laughs> 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 <laughs>